One of the ideas that we're going to be looking at uh, here in this session is uh, class size. Over the past few years, the legislature has regularly passed a waiver that allows uh, class sizes to be bigger, in some cases much bigger, than, uh, than the rules that we've set. Uh, this year, it sounds like thing, there, there might be a little bit of a fight over that. The budget put out by the governor and the Legislative Finance Committee count on the waiver being passed. Ms. Scandera, why do we need to do this again? Um, so at the end of the day, um, I will tell you that I know every parent across the state um, wants to make sure their child is in a class that where they get the attention they need, the interventions they need, um, and learn and grow um, on grade level year over year. Um, simultaneously, I promise you every parent looks for that great teacher in every classroom. And we know that actually research tells us great teachers, and we see this nationally and internationally, their impact on our kids every day. Out, far outweighs any other, any other school measure, including class size. So I think we've got our priorities right in the sense of saying, let's find our great teachers and let's uh, identify our struggling teachers and give them that professional development and training they need to shore up those gaps and make sure that at the end of the day, when we identify those teachers, we give them the tools they need to be successful and we align our pay so that our teachers, and this is why the governor proposed a, an increase in pay for our beginning teachers, near up to a 10% pay increase. We need to att attract our best and brightest and keep our best and brightest. That's the key for great class classrooms. In terms of class size, Senator Candelaria, we've heard about you know science classes that don't have enough equipment mm -hmm. because they have too many students or not enough computers. The Legislative Education Study Committee budget uh, has $20 million in it that would bring the class sizes back down. Do you think that's the way to go? I do. Um, what, what concerns me is, my understanding is that there's currently 700 teacher vacancies in the state of New Mexico. Uh, I think that's a reflection of the fact that we're packing more kids into a classroom. I think the research is clear that it helps kids, uh, that it gives them a more conducive learning environment in the early years. Uh, perhaps some kind of tiered approach, and I've advocated for that, would be appropriate where there are much smaller classes for youngsters and larger classes in the middle school years would be appropriate. Uh, but I think it's, again, a question of uh, approach and vision. You know, I represent the west side of Albuquerque, and when I was going door to door, one of the number one issues parents talked to me about was they felt there were just too many kids in the class and their kid wasn't getting the attention they deserved. Representative Youngblood, that is a good point. Parents do often complain that there's too many kids in the class. How do you speak to them and say, look, it's more important, as Ms. Scandera said, that we have a, a good teacher rather than a, a small class size? I think in my, in, in my conversations with my constituents, the question isn't whether or not the, the classroom is too full or the class size is too big. The question is, the teacher is spending a lot of time on the children who aren't ready to be in her class. And that is taken away from instruction time from the kids who are present and ready and able to learn what's being taught that day. So I see, um, you know, I've read the research and I believe that was something in the Met. You know, the class size wasn't necessarily, that wasn't necessarily a big issue uh, in terms of, of quality of teaching. I think when we look at passing third graders on to fourth grade, when half of our third graders cannot read and year after year after year they are passed into classes and still behind, for a teacher, that puts them at extreme deficit in what they can actually teach because they are spending a lot of time with kids who aren't ready to be in their class or who can't understand the concept that these teachers are trying to teach. Let's talk about retention for just one second. Is this going to come up during the session? Absolutely. The governor will be bringing um, a reading bill that says, let's not keep sending our kids forward ill-prepared. It's not for, for, fair for their teachers, but even bigger, it's not fair for them. They deserve to be set up for success. That's why, in the, and we'll go back to the budget for a second, there's a huge investment in the governor's budget, pre-K, $18 million, K3+, plus, which expands the school day for, for students, $18 million, and also reading interventions, $15.5 million for those little kiddos. So we make sure we get them the resources they need to be successful, but we also don't get, take our comfortability as adults and put that ahead of the success of our kids, which is what we're doing right now. So, Senator Candelaria, this is supposed to be a session that's exclusively about the budget. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think we may see, from your side of the aisle, an objection that third grade retention isn't germane. 
Well, the, I'm, no, yeah. I'm just guessing. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, the, the, there, are, there are two entities that determine germaneness, the governor and the committee's committee of the Senate. The governor sends a message on third grade retention, we will debate it. I, I will tell you why I object to mandatory retention of third graders in this state. One, I think it takes parents out of the driver's seat. I think that at the end of the day, a parent should be able to fully veto the retention of their child, and this, these bills don't do that. Actually, I'm going to interrupt. Absolutely, they do. There's a new provision provided, and I think this is so important because we heard from the, from the people who mm -hmm. said, we want to be empowered as, a, as parents. And so this retention bill says that if a parent is engaged, mm -hmm. their child shows up to school at least 95% of the time, which is the average in our state, and they participate and ensure that their child gets, participates in all the interventions made available, the parent gets the final say so. so that's a big deal. At the end of the day, um, <laughs> the bill that the Secretary designate is talking about, um, that sounds good, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, uh, it is saying it is if, if PED thinks you're a good parent, then you get to make a decision about your child. If we don't think you're a good parent, because you haven't met our metrics, you don't. So I don't agree with that provision of well, the bill. Well, I think we, what we need to consider also is, you know, teachers right now are they are screaming, saying that they are not, their profession is not taken seriously. A teacher knows, at the end of the day, if a child is ready to move on. A parent's not there every day. A parent is not sitting in that classroom six hours a day with that child who's not ready to go on to the next grade. Bottom line, let the professionals make the decisions on whether or not these children need to be passed on, period. So They're the I professionals. Agree. Well, I first, agree. let's, uh, let's see if we even get it to the floor <laughs> and, and if it's germane or not. I want to talk just briefly about uh, Representative Mimi Stewart's idea to issue a second kind of diploma to high school students in New Mexico. Mm. It would require students to have three, not four years of math. We did just bump it up to four not so long ago. And it re would require uh, less lab science. Ms. Gandara, what do you think about this idea? I call that lowering the bar for our kids. And our kids, uh, over and over again, have responded. When we raised those standards, when we raised the standards of expectation for high school in 2011, you know what, there was an outcry at first, oh my, you know, we're raising the standards. Within two years, our high school kids had outdone their previous performance on lower standards. That tells us something. Our kids absolutely respond, and it would be a shame to lower the, the bar when our kids have demonstrated they know how to respond to high expectations. And in fact, let's stop spending $20 million every year on remediation, needing courses in college because we're not setting our kids up for success in high school, and now we're going to lower that bar? I think it's a misplaced priority. Well, let me ask you, as someone who did not take four years of math and could not have taken four years of math, does this mean we're asking them to take calculus? No. Um, I, when the four-year expectation, as you mentioned, is there now, and there are, there are multiple. You're expected uh, for Algebra one, yes, Algebra two, and then you have different elective courses you can choose in math. And so this is an opportunity to demonstrate that you really do own your subject matter and material so that you're ready for success. Um, but students can choose kind of what, what courses in math um, after that first bar. Do you like it, I Representative like it. Youngblood? I, do I like the bill? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I, like the, 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 I like raising the bar. I mean, I think that the bill is, I actually, I think it's a disservice to our young people that are going into college and that are going into the workforce. Have you seen it? Do you like it? I haven't read the bill. All I've heard is the press coverage about it. So we'll see if it makes it over to the Senate. Well, what do you think? Uh, at the end of the day, uh, I, I think that four years of math uh, sounds like a reasonable expectation given the kind of economy we live in and given the kind of world that we have. Uh, and if kids are struggling in university, I think that tells us something else is wrong along the pipeline. Um, that, that changing that component of it may not necessarily be the correct policy change that needs to happen. Let's talk about principal advancement. Representative Youngblood, you've got a bill that would give more money to principals and make it easier for them to get the job. Why do we need to do this now? Well, I think it's important that we become competitive with our surrounding states and give teachers who are good at what they do or, or who want advancement a an opportunity to do that if they, if without putting a number on the years they should be in the, in the classroom first. Um, I think that there are many people who are gifted at leadership. 
in leadership roles. And, and if they can see, a ch I think they should, should be able to apply for those positions just like they would in any other state around us because I think what's happening is we're losing teachers to other states around us who already offer you know, two, year, you know, two years experience and you can, you can be a principal. And, and obviously for the money. I think that you know, when you take on more responsibility, you should be able to, to get paid more money. Senator Candelaria, you recently participated in a town hall that New Mexico PBS sponsored with educators and uh, students and parents and community members. Out of the town hall, a, a very diverse group of people, came a list of resolutions that you have said you will put into a memorial this legislative session. What are some of those resolutions? Uh, I think some of them include uh, the idea of having a well-rounded and culturally relevant and bilingual curriculum in New Mexico that emphasizes values such as critical thinking, the development of skills through art, music, science, reading, math, and other electives that enrich that educational experience for students. I think that we want to acknowledge as a state that poverty uh, is a systemic issue in our education system and that working together we can empower our local communities, local school boards, uh, to promote an education system that responds to those needs and meets those needs of, of the student. This is kind of a parents just bringing it back down to the, to the basics for, for you guys to say, as you're going up to Santa Fe, listen, don't forget about art and music. Don't forget you know, that we want them to be well-rounded and that we want you to remember that we're suffering through poverty and other issues at home. Is, is that the kind of gist of, of what you heard at the town hall? At the end of the day, I think this is grassroots folks 12,000 folks, I think at last count, uh, coming together and voicing a vision and values that they want to see reflected and they want to see their policymakers respond to in Santa Fe. Well, we'll all be watching as you guys go to Santa Fe and duke it out. Thank you so much. Thank you.